yeah, what Francis is describing to you, that's, that's the state of mind and that's behind it all. Like the, the purpose of awakening, the purpose of the community truly is mysticism, um, which is beyond form. It's, it's to identify with this presence. It is the involuntary flow. It has no personal control. It's not a personal perspective of anything. It's just an awareness of this divine grace. And being the spirit is uh, is supporting what structure or what form is most helpful. So when there's a small group, it can be it can seem more spontaneous in form because there's a lot less communication needed. When the group of uh, people seem to be more higher numbers, then um, what I've noticed is there there can be more structure brought in for the support. So at different periods within the community, it can look quite structured, like a coming together for prayer at 8 a.m., a miracle moment at 8.30, morning session at 9, and everyone goes into projects, which is uh, using whatever your backdrop is for mind training, for mind watching, for noticing the personal doer that's trying to get the job done, you know, that personal responsibility, and releasing that to the spirit. So the purpose of, uh, of every project that we're doing, it could be cooking, it could be cleaning, it could be uh, transcribing talks, it could be working on the internet. Um, all of the projects are for this one purpose, is for being in prayer, for experiencing the present moment and seeing the ego resistance to it. And then coming together at lunchtime and then there are expression sessions. Again, the purpose is clearing the mind, keeping the altar clear, um, where there's an opportunity to really empty the mind again. Uh, and beneath it all is this one purpose of, of clearing. And What's being undone, like Francis was describing, is this self-concept or this pride. And I remember when I first came over to this, um, the States and was there, and one of my first projects was um, stomping CDs. And David had done a lot of talks, and uh, at that time, we, he had just had cassette tapes, and so we just started making CDs out of them to make them available at the gatherings. And so we'd burn one CD at a time and then uh, make some labels for them on the computer, print out the labels, get the little CD stomper and stomp one CD at a time, put them in the little paper envelopes, put them in a stack, put a rubber band around them, put them to the side. So this was my project. And when I was there doing this project, oh, the pride that was coming up. <sighs> This is so beneath me. <laughs> Do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> I, was, I was so important in my previous life. And here I was stomping CDs. And I could just feel this ego coming up. This like, ah. And it doesn't make sense, but it's just this like, resistance, resistance, resistance. I came up to David and said, David, I feel terrible. I just, I feel terrible doing this. I don't want to be doing this. It feels boring. It feels like death. And he said, well, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so what's your inspiration? You know, this is about joy. I'm like, I don't, my joy? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Well, what do you want to do? I don't know. I just... <laughs> Okay, well, stomping CDs is probably really good for you right now. <laughs> okay, so we back to stomping and just was in prayer. It's like, okay, Spirit, I trust you. I trust you completely. If this is truly for my highest good. Then I will stomp CDs. And as I just stayed with it and stayed with it and watched my mind wanting to go elsewhere, you know, all of this other hypothetical, ridiculous ideas of where else I could go and how much happier I would be elsewhere. I stopped. 
certain point, and this peace came over me when I realized that, oh, this is exactly where I'm meant to be. This is exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And all of this that's being flushed up is just the self-concept that's being undone. And the peace came from being able to watch those thoughts and see them for what they were and knowing that there is no where else on earth I'm meant to be. And then I remembered, oh my God, that was the prayer of my heart before I got into this consciously. I recognized the split in my mind that I always wanted to be somewhere else. You know, I wasn't satisfied with where I was and I wanted to be elsewhere. And then I would go there or be there, wherever it was. And then you know, there was always something missing or someone missing. I couldn't be in my favorite country with my favorite friends and my family and the job. I couldn't get all the pieces together. And so in that moment, I realized, oh, Oh, this is it. This is the beginning of coming into accepting that I am exactly where I'm meant to be and all that's being flushed up into awareness is the ego being healed from the mind and just not to follow those thoughts. So that was yeah, the beginning for me of realizing what it is to be in purpose. It's like get into your purpose, get into your function. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be super happy and joyful doing it. But you're doing your mind training when you know that the purpose of what you're doing is for the healing of the mind. It's serving the spirit in some way. And then bit by bit that flushing happened. And then after a while I realized the gift of what I was actually doing. It's like, oh my God, these, every CD here, the communication on these is golden. It's for awakening, it's for sharing the, the healing of the mind for everyone who receives these. And then I was just overcome with gratitude for what I was actually, actually doing. So yeah, that's, that's the purpose of why we come together. It's for this very authentic undoing of this resentment of the self-concept. And, uh, and being guided by the spirit as to just exactly how it looks. And it, it, it just becomes so much more collaborative. The more the fear of the communication gets washed from the mind, and the fear of being present and allowing the spirit to, you know, gets washed from the mind, we actually become able to collaborate together. When we're not afraid of, and protecting ourselves from each other, we can open up to hearing the same thing. And, and so that's our experience now, is this, this divine flow between us to the point where, you know, like sometimes David will open his mouth and it's like I hear all the words that are coming out of that mouth. <laughs> it really is one spirit you know, that's coming through the different flavors. And what's being washed away is the self that says, I want to be the one speaking, or I would say it differently, or I, 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 you know? Then I, 